Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In the previous installment, we took a look at a way of manually creating parametric G-theory connections using the style spline. However, this was only between line segments. What if we wanted to create that parametric style spline between two arcs or a line in an arc? Well, there is isn't a way. So to recap what we covered in the last video, creating a parametric style spline between line segments is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to draw the style spline and it needs to be of at least degree six under curve degree. And instead of selecting the line and the spline and adding say tangent or equal curvature, what I'm going to do are, is pick the line segments that control the spline and make them collinear to this line segment. Finally, I'm going to pick these and make them collinear to this line segment. And I've now may fully define the line segments, but I need to lock down these control vertices such that the spline is parametric. So we will make all three of these equal to each other. And then we're going to do the same thing in this direction as well. Let's just move these points up a little bit more. Grab these here. I might have to really zoom in to get the last one. We'll make them equal. And it looks like it just needs a little wake up. So even though I can't move this point anywhere, trust me, it's still fully defined. I think if we were to make a little dimensional edit, it might wake up. Oh, no, this other side jumped. But you can see now that we do have a nice parametric G3. If we turn on our curvature combs, there's that nice smooth acceleration. But this is only between two line segments. Let's take it a step further and work with arc segments instead. So here I have a sketch with two arc segments and I've created a sketched fillet between them and then this sketch fillet is kind of going to act as the kind of radio or the size of our G3 connection. It will end up going through these two points. Uh, I've created a, another sketch. Instead of trying to do it all in one sketch, I've just converted those entities in. We're going to hide this. So I have my uh, converted entity here and I've made it uh, for construction. So let's grab the style spline. We're just going to sketch some points out here to start. I like picking the spline and then manually setting it to degree six knowing that I have the number of control segments required for this. So we're ultimately we're going to have three in this direction and three in this direction. So because I, I can't rely on the linear relation here, if I were to add tangency to this, because I don't can't actually make a line, obviously, collinear to, uh, to an arc. So what I'm going to do is grab the spline, and we will add equal curvature, which takes up the, the degree of freedom of these first two line segments. And then we're going to do the same thing over here, equal curvature. And now we need to control the position of these last two um, line segments in each direction. So I'm going to pick the three of them and we're going to, on the first direction. And we're just basically trying to add relations that are not numbered dimensions that can lock this down. So equals is a good way of controlling all of these. If we were to try and manipulate the spline here, we can see that we can change the angle between them. So what I actually will now do is the angle of these first two is locked. We can actually see that this first segment is uh, is black. So what I'm going to do is make these two collinear to each other. And then finally I will make in the second direction these two collinear to each other. And there we go. Fully defined G3 style spine. Now it's not perfect G3, but it's pretty good. There is a little bit of wavering here. However, this is a nice fully defined arc or G3 connection between two arcs. And what we can actually do if we do want a little more control is instead of relying on the collinear relation, we can use angle relations to also further our shape. So I'm going to pull this segment down here a little bit. And what I'll do is I will just add say a 10 degree angle between these segments and then manipulate this one to get my angle and also add a 10 degree angle dimension here. 
angle dimensions are great because they're not dimensions, right? So we don't want to have any number dimension. And actually here, we probably want to have a little bit less because I only have a G2 connection. So this can require a little bit of playing around by man manually manipulating the control polygon first and then adding the dimensions as required. So let's take a look at a real world example of a parametric G3 blend. Here I have a plastic enclosure for some kind of IoT device. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what it is. What's important is that it has arced sides here and there is a G3 connection here between them. So let's look at our first sketch that helps set this object up. Here I have a six inch dimension defining the overall size of this shape because it's symmetric about the front and the right plane. I only have a quarter of it modeled. Here I've used an equation to drive the size of this sketch fillet, which is driving the size of the blend between these two arcs set for uh, one third the overall dimension. In this case, it works out to two inches. So next I've converted the sketch into another sketch, made the sketch Fill it here, set for construction, and sketched our G3 style spline by using the equal curvature relation between the arc segments and setting up an angle dimension along with the equals relation between each of these segments such that it is black and fully defined. So if we roll to the end of the tree, we see our shape. And let's say we needed to make an edit to this. The, uh, the circuit board that went into this has actually grown, so it can no longer be uh, six inches. In size, it needs to be eight. So I'm going to change this dimension to eight inches, exit out of the sketch, and whoa, what happened there? That's not what we uh, were anticipating. We wanted to have that nice G3 blend between these two arc segments. And so I've seen this before when using this kind of manually work, manual workaround for the G3 connection. And what happens is that these points in the spline, they all should have moved, but they stayed where they were. And so the solver doesn't like this. So one thing that can try, uh, you can try to, to fix this is a control Q and there it goes. The other way, uh, if the control Q doesn't work, uh, I just end up undoing such that the sketch was in its original size. And instead of trying to make grad or one big change at a time, I'm going to walk it up. So I might try a half inch. And there it even exploded, but control Q fixed it. So let's go up to seven here. Well, extra out of the sketch and there, no issue. So one thing I found with using this manual technique is you have to be a little careful when making big edits to kind of the size of the pri between the, uh, the segments that the G3 is connected between. And if you do need to increase the size or decrease the size, do a little bit at a time until you eventually get to your shape and you'll have a lot better success. So building on what we learned with the parametric G3 connection between two line segments, it is possible to create parametric G3 relations between arc segments. And the way we go about doing that is adding the equals relation between the various segments of the style spline, adding the equal curvature to the arc segments we'd like to connect, and then using either the collinear between the first two segments or angle dimensions between the second and the first and the third and the second uh, segments in the control of the style spline such that the style spline is fully defined and uh, we have a nice G3 parametric connection between them. And just to be cautious when making changes to the underlying arc segments that are being connected, it's best to gradually increase the size of your sketch a little bit at a time until you get to that final size you need. Because if you make drastic changes to the underlying sketch geometry, you may have the style spline explode on you. Sometimes a control Q rebuild will fix that, but if it doesn't, just undo until the sketch was unexploded and then walk it up a little bit at a time until you reach the size that you need. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SolidWorks files on the Demonic Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SolidWorks Surfacing.